Welcome, everybody. My name is Jennifer Prell. I'm the CEO and founder of ElderWorks Educational Services. Today, we're going to talk about some veterans' pensions, benefits, and resources available to veterans um, throughout the country. But since we're based in Illinois, we're focusing on you. So the, we're going to go ahead and get started. What are veterans' benefits and pensions? What are the benefits themselves? Who do the benefits apply to? And how do you receive the benefits? That's really important. We're also going to go over Agent Orange exposure, um, which is extremely important. So our goal is to locate every veteran, their widow, and families, wherever we might find them, and inform them of the availability and qualifications of the veterans' benefits, and to assist however legally possible the VA service officers and qualifying claimants, and to partner with healthcare professionals and facilities in better serving the financial needs of our veterans and their families. Basically, ElderWorks goal is to help every older adult and senior who needs help in their planning and preparing for the aging process. What is aid in attendance? It's also called the veterans pension and survivors pension. Aid in attendance housebound is a pension paid by the veterans affairs to veterans, veteran spouses, or surviving spouses. It's paid in addition to a veteran's basic pension. The pension may not be paid without eligibility to a VA basic pension. Aid in attendance is for applicants who need financial help for in-home care to pay for assisted living or a skilled nursing facility. What are aid and attendance benefits? A non-service connected disability benefit, meaning the disability does not have to be a result of service. You cannot receive non-service and service connected compensation at the same time. Who qualifies? Aid and attendance benefits are paid to those applicants who are eligible for a VA pension. They meet the service requirements, meet certain disability requirements, and meet income and asset limitations. Wartime veterans who have limited or no income are at least 65 years old, if they're under 65, are permanently or completely disabled, and the surviving spouses of a deceased wartime veteran has not remarried. The veterans that are eligible include Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Merchant Marines, and Coast Guard. The basic qualifications you must be honorably discharged have 90 days of active duty, served at least one day during a wartime period, but you did not need to be overseas. You need to have current need and show that you're receiving care and paying for care. Current cost of medical care exceeds your current income, and this does not include your house and auto. The surviving spouse was married to the veteran over one year at time of death, but not divorced. You will be required to need assistance with activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, toileting, meals, um, or help protecting yourself from hazards of your environment. You could be bedridden, the claimant is in a nursing home due to mental or physical incapacity, or the claimant is blind or so nearly blind as to have corrected visual acuity of five over 200 or less in both eyes or concentric contraction of the visual field to five degrees or less. The countable income is important. It includes income from most sources as well as any eligible dependents. It includes your earnings, disability and retirement payments, interest and dividend payments from annuities, and income from farming or a business. Income also includes other assets. The VA will exclude any income that the law allows. Social security income is not counted as part of countable income. The veteran must have countable income of zero to receive the maximum benefit. Your net worth limitations to qualify for benefits through November of this year, 2024, is $155,356. This is a little bit of a uh, complicated chart, so we're just gonna go over it real quick. The maximum annual pension rate category for a single veteran. So if you're a veteran that's not married, your basic pension or maximum annual pension rate is it's the amount that you can get at a max. This doesn't mean you're going to get it, but this is the maximum for you at this time. That's $2,300 per month. All right. The 5% of basic pension, the amount you subtract from medical expense, excuse me, is $827. 
The annual aid and attendance pension rate, your yearly income must be less than $27,609. Okay, and then it's different for each level. So the veteran with a spouse or a dependent, the veteran with a spouse needing care, two married veterans and surviving spouse. You can see through the chart what you could possibly receive. And this is the maximum pension rate. Unreimbursed medical expenses. Only the portion of unreimbursed medical expenses that exceed 5% of the basic pension may be deducted. So a portion of unreimbursed medical expenses paid by the claimant may reduce the countable income. So that includes the cost of a skilled nursing facility or assisted living facility, not the rent, but the care, health-related insurance premiums, including Medicare premiums, diabetic incontinence supplies, private caregivers, prescriptions, and dialysis not covered by any other health plan. Your net worth, the value of your assets, affects eligibility. The VA pensions are a need-based pension benefit. Personal goods exempt from net worth are the house you live in, the car used for the care of the claimant. So that's important. The claimant must have access to the car. Household goods and personal effects, such as clothing, jewelry, and furniture, unless it's of extraordinary value, like if you had a a Picasso in the house, for instance, that would be considered accountable uh, part of your net worth. Things to ponder. Veterans automatically get full VA health care and prescription benefits once approved by the VA for veterans aid and attendance or survivors pension. Assisted living or skilled nursing facility automatically it qualifies you for the benefit as long as you meet the financial um, guidelines. Home care can qualify and be provided by a relative, but not a spouse. The benefit is tax-free. It's retroactive to the application date. So if you send in your application today and they don't process it for six, eight, nine months, it goes back to today. So you'll get a big check if you are approved. The payment goes directly to the veteran or the surviving spouse. And the VA has a three-year look back period, which is quite important, guys. It's important because the VA only has a three-year look back, but Medicaid has a five-year look back. They're both federal programs. You can't be on both. So if you ever need Medicaid or you think you're going to need Medicaid, you have to have a five-year look back period. So if you're protecting your assets, you want to make sure that you're protecting them and not really applying for three years for the VA, five years for Medicaid. So documents you'll need to apply, your DD-214 discharge papers, uh, which you can get through Eldorks website or right on the VA website, a copy of your marriage certificate and or death certificate, birth certificates for the dependents, asset and income information, your bank statements, your pensions, IRAs, annuities, anything like that, current social security statement, a physician statement, which is a VDVA-10, that is basically saying you you do need care. A doctor has to state it. And then proof of medical expenses. Avoid a check for the direct deposit is important as well. Keep in mind, if you have any vacation property, that is considered an asset as well, and you will have to disclose that. Some other possible forms you need. They're all listed here. This is going to be um, available to you, so you can just track this and make sure you have all of these forms. They're not all required. It just depends on who you are, what kind of assistance you need. If you're the veteran themselves, the spouse, if you need the VAC, the Veterans Assistance Commission or a VA appointed uh, service officer to help you, uh, or you have a representative to help you. You want to file through an appropriate advocate. It's very important that you apply through someone who knows what they're doing. If you do anything wrong, you don't dot your I and cross your T and you apply and they deny you, you can't apply again for a year. So make sure your documents are in order. Um, some problems that can occur, reallocating assets inappropriately, which would inadvertently disqualify the claimant for VA benefits or Medicaid benefits. In other words, if they think you're committing fraud or hiding assets, they can deny you. If you are putting your assets in a trust um, with an elder law attorney. The elder law attorney will guide you to make sure your assets are used for you as you age, and that's appropriate. Um, they will not have you do anything inappropriate. So I would suggest you talk to an elder law attorney or the Veterans Assistance Commission. If the claimant is found to be incompetent due to dementia, they will withhold the benefit until a fiduciary is set in place. The VA will not knowingly work with someone with cognitive impairment because they can't um, fend for themselves, if you will. Eligible wartime periods, World War I on up. 
basically World War I, World War II, the Korean conflict, uh, Vietnam era veterans, and the Gulf War veterans, and then any other uh, veterans through a future date set by presidential proclamation. It is illegal for anyone to charge a family to complete the application for aid and attendance, also known as uh, the veteran's pension. So you can contact ElderWorks and we can re refer you to a Veterans Assistance Commission um, service officer. We can send you to the VA. Um, there's many groups that can help, the American Legion. Um, just make sure you know who you're working with. Agent Orange exposure benefit. What is Agent Orange? What area was it used? Agent Orange diagnosis and illnesses, importance of accurate death certificates, and the entitlements and spouse benefits under VA. That's what we're going to go over now. Agent Orange was a tactical herbicide used by the U.S. military for control of vegetation. It was named for the orange band around the storage barrel. The military sprayed Agent Orange and other tactical herbicides during the Vietnam War. Veterans who may have been exposed to Agent Orange include veterans who served at different locations, including Vietnam, the Korean demilitarized zone, on Thai Air Force bases at other locations, and who flew or worked on C-123 aircraft. VA offers eligible veterans a free Agent Orange registry health exam for possible long-term health problems related to exposure, and the VA also offers health care, disability compensation, and other benefits to eligible veterans for certain disease conditions, as well as benefits for children of Vietnam veterans who have spina bifida. Defendants and survivors may also be eligible for other benefits. Veterans who were exposed to Agent Orange may have certain related il illnesses. They're not pleasant. Um, service requirements for presumptive of exposure. Presumption, excuse me, of exposure. You have a presumption of exposure if you meet at least one of the service requirements listed below. Between January 9th, 1962 and May 7th, 1975, you must have served for any length of time at least in at least one of these locations in the Republic of Vietnam, aboard a U.S. military vessel that operated in the inland waterways of Vietnam, or at a vessel operating not more than 12 nautical miles seaward from the demarcation line of the waters of Vietnam and Cambodia, or on regular perimeter duty on the fenced-in perimeters of the U.S. Army installation in Thailand or a Royal Thai Air Force Base. These bases include, oh, I can't say these words, I'm so sorry, I'm going to try, uh, Utapau, Uban, Nakhon, Phnom, Udorn, Takli, Korat, or Dan Muang. I'm sorry if I miss said any of those. You must have served in or near the Korean DMZ for any length of time between September 67 to August 31st, 71, or served on active duty in a regular Air Force unit location where a C-123 aircraft with traces of Agent Orange was assigned and had repeated contact with this aircraft due to your flight, ground, or medical duties, or were involved in transporting, testing, storing, or other uses of Agent Orange during your military service, or were assigned as a reservist to a certain flight, ground, or medical crew duties at one of the below locations. Um, this includes Lockbourne Rickenbacker Air Force Base in Ohio, 1969 to 1986, Westover Air Force Base, I'm going to go ahead and let you read this through, Pittsburgh International Airport, and for more service requirement details, please review the public laws and the public information. Agent Orange eligibility and presumptive illnesses. Full eligibility requirements. Determination of eligibility based on the facts of each veteran's claim. The VA assumes that certain cancers and other illnesses are caused by Agent Orange. They call these presumptive diseases. And they assume that veterans who served in certain locations were exposed to Agent Orange. They refer to this as presumptive exposure. Requirements for Agent Orange presumptive diseases. When sound medical and scientific evidence shows that an illness is caused by Agent Orange exposure, if the veteran has been diagnosed with one of these illnesses, they do not need to prove that it started during or got worse because of the military service. There are many cancers caused by Agent Orange exposure. Chronic B-cell leukemia, Hodgkin's disease, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, respiratory cancers, including lung cancer, some soft tissue sarcomas. None of these are pleasant. Other illnesses caused by Agent Orange exposure. AL amyloidosis, chloracne, or other types of acne form disease like it, diabetes mellitus type 2, ischemic heart disease, 
Parkinson's disease, peripheral neuropathy, early onset, and porphyria cutanea tarda. The importance of accurate death certificates, especially if you're applying for Agent Orange exposure benefits. The death certificate is important for survivor benefits for a VA claim. The death of a veteran is stressful for a surviving family member. Making it more so are the complexities of filing for Department of Veterans Affairs survivor benefits. For most families, what is listed on the death certificate is not really that important. But when it comes to the VA DIC and service-connected burial benefits, it sure is. Family members need to be aware of its importance before the death certificate is written so they can let the doctor know why a complete and accurate death certificate listing the veteran's chronic conditions, if applicable, is necessary. Veterans who died as a result of service-connected injury or disease, presumptive illness of Agent Orange, ensure survivor's benefits. If you're the surviving spouse or child under the age of 18 or between the ages of 18 and 23 and currently attending school full-time, or parent of a service member who died in the line of duty, or the survivor of a veteran who died from a service-related injury or illness, you may be able to get a tax-free monetary benefit called VA Dependency Indemnity and Compensation. The Veterans Death Certificate is the proving document or evidence that the veteran service-connected disability caused death or materially, materially and significantly contributed to it. It is suggested to list the veteran service-connected disability as the cause of death and or contributing factor to veteran's death to ensure benefits for survivor benefits. Vinyl disease or condition resulting in death should be sequentially listed if any condition leading to the cause should also be listed and enter the underlying causes, disease or injury that initiated the events resulting in death. In other words, if your loved one had cancer, had Parkinson's, had any of those icky diseases, you need to document all of that, even if they didn't die from it, okay? They could have had it beforehand and then died from something else, but it could be a precondition, pre conditioning disease that caused or helped cause the death of the veteran. Here's a case study. The spouse contacted the VSO for assistance with hospice care. A VSO is a veteran service officer. The vet VSO found that the veteran was service connected for ulcerative colitis only since 1970s as he was diagnosed while in service. The veteran passed away of renal failure and end-stage renal disease Neither are presumptive to Agent Orange and did not pass due to his service-connected condition. The surviving spouse and VSO need to provide medical records or a medical opinion that shows the service-connected conditions substantially or materially contributed to the veteran's death. So you can see that he did not die from, or they're saying he didn't die um, from the pre-existing condition, but he did. So you have to make sure it's documented. If you didn't document anything, it's really hard to convince the VA to uh, fund the person's death and the surviving spouse. Evidence provided to the VA. Things you need to supply. The veteran's death certificate, a scholarly journal showing correlation of veteran service-connected condition to his cause of death, a medical opinion provided by veteran's provider, and the results, the veteran service connection for cause of death granted. Surviving spouse was awarded DIC and maximum amount for burial benefit. So basically, the Veterans Assistance Commission helped the surviving spouse show the documentation, the correlation to the duty and the cause of death, the medical opinion by a doctor, and then the results were that they were granted benefits. Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2019. Anyone who served aboard ships in the open waters off the coast of Vietnam during the Vietnam War are now presumed to be exposed to Agent Orange. If your claim was denied in the past, you can file a new claim based on public law 116-23. VA survivor benefits available to you. Veteran benefits uh, include burial, the survivor's pension, which is income-based, VA dependency indemnity compensation if the veteran died of a service-connected disability, VA government marker or headstone application. If applicable, the VAC will assist with notifying Defense Finance Accounting Services, the DFAS, and VA of the veteran's death at the request of the surviving spouse or family member, filing for month of death pay from both VA and DFAS if the veteran was retired military, as well as for the survivor benefit plan if elected by the retiree. And all benefits are subject to eligibility. 
So here's some more information for you to help you out. Um, birth defects linked to Agent Orange. If you served in Vietnam or Thailand or in or near the Korean DMZ and your child has spina bifida or a certain other birth de defects, or and your child has spina bifida or a certain other birth defects, find out if your child qualifies for disability benefits. Vietnam War veterans' health issues. If you served during the Vietnam War, you may be at risk for certain health conditions. Learn about these conditions and what to do next to take care of your health. You can request your military service records, the DD-214 and others. Review and print documents from your official military personnel file. Get your VA medical records, called VA Blue Button. Set up your personal health record, download medical records, reports, images to share with your VA and non-VA providers. And find out how to apply for VA healthcare. Get instructions on how to prepare and apply for VA healthcare benefits. Um, you can use this cheat sheet which will show, uh, help you keep track of the things you're gonna need. Um, all requested items checked below, including this checklist, must be returned into the admin specialist with the Veterans Assistance Commission prior to meeting with the VSO, so the information can be scanned into your record. Please ensure all information is available prior to making an appointment for Veterans Assistance. In other words, make sure you have all of these documents with you when you go see the Veterans Assistance Commission VSO, Veterans Service Officer, so they can um, be efficient and they can do everything they can to get you every benefit you've earned and deserve, okay? There are VA caregiver support programs available to veterans. The PGCSS, Program of General Caregiver Support Services, provides peer support mentoring, skills training, coaching, telephone support, online programs and referrals to available resources to caregivers of veterans. So there's hope, people. There is support for the caregiver. The veteran must be enrolled with the VA healthcare and be receiving care from a caregiver in order for the caregiver to participate. Caregivers who participate in PGCSS are called general caregivers. General caregivers do not need to be a relative or live with the veteran. If you are a caregiver of a veteran enrolled in a VA healthcare who is interested in connecting with other caregivers, receive additional support from a professional care team, or are you, you're looking to enhance your skills as a caregiver, this might be right for you. The PGCSS general caregivers may have access to training and support through in-person online and telehealth sessions, skills training, focusing on caregiving for a veteran's unique needs, individual support related to the care of the veteran, respite care, a resource that offers medically and age-appropriate short-term services to eligible veterans and allows caregivers to take time for themselves. In contrast, the veteran is cared for in a safe and caring environment. And peer support mentoring, which is really important, um, Hearing from your peers, hearing their stories, and and really talking things out does help everybody that's involved um, in these these peer support mentoring groups. Um, let's see here, PCAFC program of comprehensive assistance for family caregivers. This is a really good program. It sustained or aggravated a serious injury or illness in the line of duty in the active military, naval, or air service during any service era among other applicable eligibility criteria, an eligible veteran must have a single or combined service-connected disability rating. So you need a 70% disability rating or higher with the VA to get care, family caregiver assistance, okay? Be in need of personal care services, requiring in-person personal care services for a minimum of six continuous months based on any one of the following, and an inability to perform an activity of daily living. That's bathing, dressing, medication reminders, housekeeping, laundry, driving, um, anything like that, you can get some assistance with them. A need for supervision or protection based on symptoms or residuals of neurological or other impairments or injury. A need for regular extensive instruction or supervision without which the ability of the veteran to function in daily life would be seriously impaired. If someone has cognitive impairment, dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, ALS, uh, these are all good reasons to get some help. Um, and they, some of those are neurological impairments, okay? The veteran can designate one primary family caregiver and up to two secondary family caregivers on the application. Secondary family caregivers serve as a backup support to the primary family caregiver when needed. Services will depend on whether you are the primary fi family caregiver or a secondary family caregiver. If you are the primary caregiver, you may receive a monthly stipend paid directly to you as the caregiver. Uh, so if you are an adult child and you are the primary and you've given up your job to take care of your dad or mom, 
you can get funded for that. Access to health care insurance through civilian health and medical program of the Department of Veterans Affairs, if you do not already have health insurance. Mental health counseling, certain beneficiary travel benefits when traveling with the veteran to appointments, at least 30 days of respite care per year for the veteran. Respite's a short-term relief for someone else to care for the veteran while you take a break. It is very important as a caregiver to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else. You will get sick. You will become incapacitated yourself, and now your loved one is, is not going to get your care. You're both going to need care. If you're a secondary caregiver, you may receive mental health counseling and certain beneficiary travel expenses benefits when traveling with the veteran to appointments. The McHenry County Veterans Assistance Commission Caregiver Relief Veterans Assistance, CRVA, is for those caring for a veteran or the spouse of a veteran. The caregiver can get a break. You would get funded for up to 90 days and serviced up to 90 days. And then at day 91, you need to reapply so that you can get the benefit again. Up to 600 per period for a veteran or surviving spouse caring for themselves but need additional help. Up to $1,000 for a veteran with a spouse per period. So if you both need care, you can get up to $1,000 per period. Asset allowance is $155,000. So your first $155,000 of assets doesn't count. So anything over that does count. So you'll need to do a spend down. Covers adult day, companion care, respite, housekeeping, meal prep, and more depending on your need. Other benefits, you can get caregiver support, Medicare and Medicaid, continuing education. There's long-term care, health, home health care, adult day, respite care, hospice care, nursing home care. The death benefits include a grave site, opening and closing of the grave, perpetual care, a government headstone or marker, a burial flag, and a presidential memorial certificate. And you, get, you can also get free tax preparation. The Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program is an IRS initiative that provides free tax help to people who make $75,000 or less and persons with disabilities, the elderly, and limited English-speaking taxpayers. Most VITA sites also offer their service to veterans regardless of income. And IRS-certified volunteers receive training to help prepare basic tax returns in communities across the country. These are good benefits, guys, and you've earned them. Elder Works Services to you. Well, Elder Works is a complimentary service. We are a social service, a not-for-profit 501c3. Elder Works can offer you information, referrals, and guidance for any type of senior housing and home care. We offer resources and benefits based on you and your needs. We provide education to community members and professionals. We are advocates for you, so if you need some advocacy on your behalf, we can help you find the appropriate services or we can advocate for you. Uh, we have other programs like Make a Senior Smile, so if you're an isolated senior, we have uh, community members making thousands and thousands of cards, which we send all over to isolated seniors throughout Illinois to just bring a little smile, which is really fun. If you'd like to make cards or receive a card, please let us know. Stepping out to Fitness Challenge, uh, everybody that's in the challenge gets a free t-shirt. And every month there's a challenge uh, where you fill out your exercise daily and you can go into a drawing for gift cards. And then annually you can win a, a larger prize such as a TV or an Apple iWatch. Uh, the Aging Better Expo is held the second Wednesday of every August. And that's an expo with 110 resource booths and about 12 classes on aging. It's excellent, it's fun, it's very social. You should come, it's good stuff. Uh, we have regular fitness classes virtually, and we're now doing some um, on-site in Palatine at 251 East Northwest Highway at our center. We also have special events all year. So please sign up for Elder Works newsletter so you can find out what's going on. We also have a caregiver giver support group that meets Mondays, um, every other Monday, uh, virtually. Some resources available to you um, are listed here, and they can help you with any of your veterans' benefits. Uh, ElderWorks does not help you apply, but we can give you information and help you with your forms, help you find your forms, I should say. Important contacts. The Veterans Assistance Commission is all over Illinois. We are one of the lucky states. I think we have 12, 15 Veterans Assistance Commissions. They are not part of the VA. They're separate ent entities entirely. So their goal is to get you every benefit you've earned. Uh, the VA is not mandated to teach you or tell you about all programs available to you. The VAC wants you to get them. That's the difference. 
Uh, ElderWorks has a senior resource directory. It's available online on elderworks.org. It's 340 pages of services and providers in Illinois and uh, all local and federal government information. So that's a really good book to have. We also have them available at our center in Palatine if you'd like to pick up a hard copy. Uh, caregiver.va.gov, you can find your docs there and more information on caregiver.va.gov care veterans ASB. All right, if you have any questions, please send your questions to help at elderworks.org. We are happy to answer any questions you have, or if you need personal assistance, we're happy to do that as well. We have a social service team. We have advisors that tour the state and view all of the senior communities. So we do know who's good at what and uh, who needs a little help here and there. So please reach out for your complimentary assistance. You've earned our help. You are an older adult or a senior or a loved one of a senior, and we are here for you. Thank you again. My name is Jennifer Prell, and I'm happy to help you.